So I have to stand really close to Lonnie because we're live streaming this right now, and he's mic'd and I'm not, and I'm not an actor, so I probably can't project very to well. So. tens of elevens of people. <laughs> There is eight waiting, come on. Nice. Um, okay, so welcome everybody. Um, if you haven't uh, met me, I'm Tina, I'm your branch rep for Actor Alberta. I'm here, thank you for giving up a couple hours on your Saturday afternoon. Um, I can guarantee that this is gonna be a just action-packed, an information-packed <laughs> workshop with fabulous Lonnie. I think most of you know him. I think as you were coming in, it, there's a lot of high-fiving going on, so. <laughs> I don't need to give too much of an introduction. Um, but anyway, um, he's got a ton of good information. Um, and again, so if you, we're all adults here, if you need to leave, the washrooms are just outside. Um, yeah, and if you have any questions after the workshop, please feel free to email myself or Donna. Um, Cause there's a lot of information that Lonnie's gonna refer to, well not a lot, but some um, that's gonna refer back to the collective agreement, the IPA. So if you have specific questions about that, um, and then on another note, um, we just completed um, bargaining with the Canadian, Producer, Canadian Media Producers Association. Um, so there's a whole bunch of really good stuff that we were able to get into the next IPA. Um, so in the coming weeks, um, if you've worked under the last IPA, you will be sent some information, you'll get to vote to ratify the agreement. Um, and that'll all happen before January 1st. So keep an eye on your email and the e-news. Um, we're really proud of this new agreement. There's a ton of really great language in there to protect performers um, when it comes to harassment, when it comes to nudity, when it comes to safety on set. Um, so it's a really great agreement and I was lucky enough to be part of the staff bargaining team and uh, President Blair Young, who's the president here, um, he was one of the, um, sorry I've got a bit of a cold, he was one of the uh, performer represent rep representatives representing um, Alberta and he did a fantastic job. So I wish he was here today, we could give him a round of applause, but. Anyway, just to let you know, keep an eye on your he's Maybe he's probably online. Hey, Blair. Anyway, I'm going to let you guys uh, get into it with Lonnie. All right. Let's Thanks, Tina. All, right. All right, Tina, everyone. Let's Thanks. give it up for you. She works hard for it. Um, yeah, as Tina said, I, I, I do recognize uh, a lot of you, and then some of you are new faces. Uh, and I recognize a lot of you from acting background, seeing that some people have actually already stood in. Uh, some people from theater, some people from, from all around. So uh, some of the things I might talk about might be repetitive uh, and it might be a little different than sort of things that are in your head, which is totally okay because there are so many ways to do our job. Uh, I'm just hitting on some of the key points that, that I have and some other stand-ins that I asked to send me some information how. So uh, with that, uh, consider this more of a sort of an introduction and some ideas on stand-in. And a lot of you, I think, have probably witnessed uh, what a stand-in does on set uh, from a distance or close up. So um, there might be some familiarity to that as well. So I did a slideshow. Yes. So I apologize if there's spelling or, right? It's keynote. So stand in or second team. Of course, everyone's familiar with, uh, this is kind of what it looks like most of the time. Uh, certainly if you haven't been on set, you don't know how busy it is because you're seeing a clean picture, <laughs> right? So a lot of times after uh, the blocking is done and the second team goes in, you have all these coming in and uh, so it can get really messy. Uh, what is a stand-in? So uh, Wikipedia <laughs> tells us that a uh, stand-in is uh, a person who substitutes for the actor before filming for technical purposes such as lighting and camera setup. Stand-ins allow the director of photography to light the set and the camera department to light and focus scenes while the actors are acting, which is actually really totally exactly what it is. Uh, Stand-in is a subcategory of background performer. Um, that's why whenever you uh, do your vouchers, they're the, the, the same, the background. And that's also why, and we'll get into it, is uh, the person who actually hires you for the job is the same person that hires you for background. Uh, and which is great because then they get familiar with you and how you look and how you perform on set, which helps you book stand-in work. Uh, the stand-in performer is hired to physically replace another performer during setup. Uh, on some shows, there might only be two or three stand-ins. 
That means you're standing in for an eclectic group of people uh, in different sizes, and we'll get into how to uh, deal with that shortly as well. Uh, actor members are, are eligible to work as stand-ins. Uh, the actor uh, roles are awarded to full members first. So it's uh, s the same sort of principles why the union is so great is because it starts, and this is with acting as well, it starts in when there's calls for actor members, they start with the, the members first and it kind of trickles down. The problem sometimes that happens uh, with uh, us is there's the full members might not be available to put their names in, to the stand in, or don't put their names in. And then it just kind of forces them to have to kind of pick outside. So you do see a lot of well, not a lot. You do see a few people that come to the stand-in world that haven't actually been through uh, the normal world of acting in the background and the theater and that sort of thing. Uh, you'll notice that uh, the actor issues a casting breakdown. Uh, have you all seen those breakdowns that come through sometimes looking for stand-ins? And sometimes they'll show you a picture of a man or a woman and their, their how tall they are and that sort of thing. Uh, I would encourage, even if they're... they're uh, saying someone's uh, six foot tall, and maybe you're 5'9", five 5'11", five just sitting at yourself and say, I'm 5'9", five 5'11". Five five it could be that they're looking for s skin tone. It could be that they're looking for hairline, something that kind of helps them a little better. Uh, they'll pick who they pick. Does that make sense? Yeah. So uh, essentially, is the once you kind of get a, a name, once you become a name in the standing <laughs> world, <laughs> They request, uh, once, you, once, you, once you become, uh, they, they know who you are, you, you, you can submit, and then sometimes the DP knows who you are, so you don't have to go through an interview process. Um, my first actual stand-in experience was on The Revenant, which it, I'll talk about a little bit about on this, but it is so not how any stand-in has ever been outside of that. Um, but for Fargo, uh, went through an interview process. So that was going in and talking to uh, both DPs, and then they just wanted to get a sense because you work under them, um, which is interesting. That's why it's the fact that we're a background voucher and under the background, we should almost be under the camera department, which isn't even after a world, but that they're our boss on set. Um, so you really have to be able to get along with them. <laughs> that was like a, those at home, there is a breath of air that came out here. Uh, <laughs> All right, benefits is working as a stand-in. They pulled this off the interweb that's pulled up here. Uh, <laughs> continuous employment. Uh, as we've discussed earlier, stand-in work is requires a commitment. Most stand-ins are engaged to the run of the show or close to it with the minimum daily fee for eight hours currently at 225.25 and overtime almost always guaranteed. That's why stand is a great gig. Um, and you know from being on set, how many people usually just go for eight hours? <laughs> <laughs> Two hours, but eight hours pay. Yeah. Right? So it, it, either way, it's like it's good. Either way, it works. <laughs> Ten minutes is all good. Uh, networking. Uh, you'll be on set all day. Uh, you'll have the m opportunity to meet and work with people uh, that are in the position to hire you in the future. Uh, make those opportunities count. Uh, be professional and dependable. So that goes back into uh, showing up at time because this goes to, let's say, Allison. Uh, background is the one who, who uh, cast you as the uh, stand-in. And she will hear back if you haven't done a good job. And that will, you know, as much as you try to submit later on, if you you, if your reputation starts to not be good, you're not going to be called back in. Education is a big thing uh, because you're on set all day. You get to monitor very closely not only what the directors and assistant directors do and require of the performers, you also get the experience to, and to process what every performer that you stand in for. Just imagine that. This, it's, uh, and if you haven't stood in and you've, you've uh, as a background performer, you've been further away from actually being able to see some of the, the, the work that the actors are doing in the rehearsal, in the blocking, and then on the actual take. And we'll get into, well, no, I'll get into it now because I've changed, so I'm going to go ahead. Oftentimes, after you've done your job and they release the stand-ins, some people will go uh, sit on the chair and, and read a book, do a crossword something. The, uh, the rest of the people will go to the monitors and allow themselves to be taught 
by the actors. And then you hear the directors let them know what more they need. So then you're learning that as well. Um, and it's an assumption on my part that everyone that's here is in here to develop a career so that they can move past uh, certain performances and be the one doing, having a stand in, right? So it, it's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity to see, and in Alberta we have, uh, I was talking to a friend from Vancouver that came and they were, they were a little shocked at how little uh, productions that we have in the city. Uh, but I have to remind them the productions that we do have in the city usually has Emmy winning, Oscar winning talent that comes in, like on a consistent. So we are given a, we're, we're not all just movies of the week with people you don't know. We're actually lucky enough to work with uh, Christopher Nolan to work with AGI, to work with uh, these, these influencers that are uh, doing some amazing things. Challenges. <laughs> uh, the commitments, as we discussed, are often worked for several weeks at a time. If you already have steady employment, it's gonna be difficult to make the commitment, uh, long days and nights. But I mean, most of you, again, have been on set, so you, the understanding is, you know how, how it is. It's long. It's cold. Uh, as glamorous as it was that uh, Leonardo DiCaprio uh, was able to tell everyone how hard it was for him to be in Alberta shooting, uh, he had a heated tent. The crew and the status, <laughs> they didn't. No one, we didn't have umbrellas following us, keeping us warm. <laughs> uh, paperwork. Uh, again, stand-ins uh, are engaged, so we have the different colored paperwork depending on, I think blue is for full members. Most of you have kind of filled one of those out, I think. If not, I did. I, I made one. Wow. Right? Oh. <laughs> this is what I was doing late at night. <laughs> so has anyone not seen this kind of paperwork? Everyone seen it? So it's important to put your number, your address, your phone number, your SIN, email. Uh, after you make a certain uh, bits of monies, you have to register with a GST number. That's something for you to look up. I don't know what that number is. $5,000. Is that it? I thought it was 30, 32 grand. And then it becomes harsh because in the next year, you never make that much money, but you still have to kind of do all the GST. Yeah. So what if I, sh can I? close that for a second or will it burn, will it just cut the lens? So, uh, performer signature. A lot of times you'll go into the booth at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day and they're like, yeah, just sign and do that. And it's like, well, it's not the end of the day, it's the beginning of the day. Don't sign that stuff until the end of the day because what this is is so that we, ch you can check that your call times and your break times are correct. So that's on us to know that we have, uh, when we, uh, get called for lunch, you look at your time out for lunch, you jot it down on your sides, you jot it down in your notebook. So when you go back uh, to the AD trailer tonight and you sign out, you know that it's the exact time. Set call, uh, date, your category, all that sort of jazz. Uh, and then at the end of the night, as they've done your paperwork, you check the math, then you agree and sign. Make sense? Hang that one up at home there. <laughs> right? I thought I might have had to fill it in, but you guys are seasoned pros. It's awesome. Uh, this just talks about how sometimes when you're, uh, if you're on a show for a long time, sometimes they put you into a contract. That means you just sign a piece of paper. Um, yeah, if you're engaged as a contract, uh, some long-running shows, I think Heartland engages their stand-ins as uh, a contract. I know Marty had a choice back in the early 2000s to do stand-in on either uh, Heartland or Passchendaele. And he, and he went to Heartland. And Passchendaele was a, what, three months job and Heartland has been a 12-year <laughs> job. Uh, went from the voucher. Uh, discrepancies, again, yeah. Uh, if you disagree with uh, some of the times that are recorded, you can bring that up in sort of a polite way. Uh, I believe we were called at lunch at this time, and then they will confer 
Uh, I believe we were back at lunch at this time, and then they will confer. Uh, if there is no resolution there, just tag in the disagree and uh, send Donna an email. Uh, yes? About the contracts, is there an advantage or disadvantage of that? I mean, I guess if you sign a contract, you're just committing to that building and owning those buildings. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's just a different form of paperwork. Okay. So uh, you would be contracted out, and that just means they, they're doing different paperwork than the vouchers. Right. Uh, and I think there's just different, like they, they do that because they know they need you every day. The rest of the time you can be on a show and you know how it is with background that, hey, are you ready to work Thursday? Yeah. Wednesday night, they're like, we don't need you. All right, or Wednesday night, you know you have Thursday off, they call you, yeah, we need you. So that's why most of them are always gonna be vouchers because it just saves the time. Uh, this is all the stuff about travel time, you know, uh, outside of the city. Uh, this is stuff that's in the I, uh, AIT agreement, so I encourage you to check that out. Um, I never really pay attention to any of this stuff. There's other back or, or sorry, uh, other stand-ins that are very uh, diligent in understanding exactly the minutia of of the time schedule. I trust that uh, production's not trying to screw me out of any money, <laughs> and I trust that when the paperwork comes to ACTRA, uh, because it does. There's four copies in here. We get one uh, that we take home, and I put it on, a, I have one of those uh, cork boards. I pin it up there until I get the rest, and then I can match them together, because uh, these get lost. Uh, production has lost these before, so you want to be able to say, no, no, I have, I have it here. And then actor gets a copy, so actor gets to look at it, I believe, yeah. Wrap time. This is the time that you actually are able to leave the set. Uh, for example, if you're required to wait for transport or shuttles, it's the time that you transport leaves that is your wrap time. Uh, let's say you are wrapped uh, downtown Calgary and you're at one big building, but they have to shuttle you to Circus and it takes 15 minutes. When you get to Circus, this is when you're done. Uh, rest days, turnaround days, six and yeah, this is all. Businessy stuff. If anyone wants me to leave that up, I'll leave it up for a second. Otherwise, uh, this is all stuff that's in the IT agreement. Any questions? Concerns? All right. Call time. This is the time you're required on set. Uh, as long as you arrive, arrive on time, you get the minimum eight hour hour day gets calculated. So uh, call sheets, has everyone seen a call sheet? Some important things about call sheets because I made one up. So <laughs> some important things to look at on your call sheet are um, call time for crew and then you go down to uh, pass the cast to background and stand-in performers and you look for a call time. That's block and ready. So it doesn't mean your call time to set is, or your call time to circus is 7.30. It means you're ready on set at 7.30 for blocking. It doesn't mean you're actually doing anything at 7.30. Most times there, that's another hour and a half while you wait for them to, to figure out what's going on. But these are important to see as well because what if uh, the stand-in, uh, it's mixed up and your actual call time is uh, 1300. You arrive on set at 730 because that's all you look at. You miss that uh, you might actually be called in later. So always double check both of those. Uh, on the call sheet, um, they always have the GPS locations as well as to where you're shooting. over here so you can always feed those into your phone and they'll give you a GPS where you're going especially when you're outside the city sometimes that's helpful they will do a map for you and it goes the map that they send you they're always really hard to read and they always go from the production office to circus and then to set uh, there the maps are really important to read because you want to find out if uh, if you're at the film studio for example you park there, you walk inside, you're, you're on set. If you're downtown Calgary, it could be Circus is 15 minutes away from set. 
So it's great that you arrive at Circus at, uh, let's say, 7.15. You know, you take your time, you fill out some paperwork, and then you're waiting for a shuttle that's not there because they're busy. Now you're not arriving to set until 7.45. That means you're late to set, which doesn't uh, bode well with them. So the GPS coordinate at Circus, because I use them a lot, mm -hmm. I like them. Mm -hmm. I believe they're always where you're going to be. So uh, this particular incident, it's it's on the uh, uh, film center um, and the GPS. Okay. Um, I'm going to say yes that it's always the circus. Okay. Um, Eighty percent. No one looks out for you as a stand-in okay. except for yourself and the other second teamers. Uh, which can be daunting. Uh, so yeah, there, uh, and I'll answer that question in, in this slide here. Uh, your call time is the time that you're standing in the middle of the set ready to set up for the first shot of the day. That means you should be hitting the parking lot and AD trailers at the least 20 minutes before that. And if you want breakfast and a bathroom break earlier. Um, Oftentimes, uh, and this is sourced from Chantel, uh, who, if you've never taken her class, The Camera Loves You, uh, highly recommend it. Uh, fantastic woman who's built a career um, for herself uh, in Alberta. Uh, if, you're in the, if you stop and you're there early and you want to get a breakfast and you have a breakfast, I've seen it before where you're there and then everyone disappears. <laughs> if there's no one there, they're usually on set. And sometimes if it's your first day on that actual set, you don't know where it is. You don't know the first setup. So uh, oftentimes keep your eyes open and follow the people that your, your ADs or your camera department. And we're going to get into sort of a little bit more about what happens when you, when you get on set and how, how you figure things out as yourself. Uh, this is some more stuff about the meal penal penalties and that sort of thing. Uh, this is interesting, too, because a lot of performers believe that the production is obligated to provide them with breakfast. Breakfast is a courtesy. So uh, that's why treating it with respect is always sort of the best. And always, I think the caterers uh, sometimes get a lot of hassle. So go out of your way to thank them and engage in them. Uh, they're pretty fantastic uh, people. Um, I have allergy their uh, uh, specific dietary requirements, and they have been nothing but helpful uh, every time, uh, which is pretty great. Um, so I always say bring your own snack bars too. Like have something just in case. It's kind of like uh, if you've done BG. Uh, I've seen it where BG, uh, their crafty is like a, a bowl of chips. <laughs> it's like. All right, now I'm really hungry. So if you have a bar with you, you're, you're pretty good. Uh, the production's obligated to provide a meal under these circumstances. Uh, and again, this is when the first meal break is half hour in length. In this case, the meal period is considered work time and it's paid throughout. Uh, when the production calls for a non-deductible first meal or when the production is operating under the auspicious of plateau continuum, uh, which is rare, so I've never heard of it actually. This is from the AIT agreement, which is Totally awesome to check out. Uh, French hours. French well, hours. That's where, yeah, where they, every hour they bring the pocket stuff. Yeah. 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 If you're having to be in their own spot. Yeah. yeah. This is just going through sort of uh, meal penalty th things as if, if you go, let's say, uh, lunch is scheduled for 1.30, but the shot's set up and they need you and you're, you're, you're on there and we don't actually get lunch until uh, 2 o'clock. That gets you in meal penalty, and that's when you start making some good money. Meal penalties are awesome, because that's, <laughs> that's where you make some money. Um, sometimes there is a grace period with all the different heads of department. They, they're allowed on certain productions a certain number of sort of grace, like say, hey, is it OK if we go in without going in penalty, if we go over a bit? And they'll, they'll give a thumbs up to that, uh, which means you don't go into meal penalty. Uh, but that only happens uh, on a few different occasions. Um, okay. Well, con contract uh, contracts just different paperwork. It goes through all the same process. So, 
Yeah, they, they, they go through, but it's just different paperwork. Um, the meals are interesting too because uh, we get a full hour as a stand-in uh, unless we are asked to uh, join them earlier. Um, a lot of stand-ins will run back when crew runs back to lunch and, <laughs> and jump on there when they're not ready and be like, yeah, no, no, I started when crew started so I get more money. It's like, no, no, no one called you. <laughs> So oftentimes, right at lunch, I'll ask a, an AD. I'll say, um, do you want us to take our full hour, or do you need us? And they will let you know. Uh, yeah, no, we need you. OK, great. Good. Then you write on your piece of paper, oh, I'll be back in from lunch at this time. Uh, working in other categories. So uh, this is me. Uh, Fargo season two is one of the Kitchen Brothers. That was a double day. So what happens is you come in for a bit of it and you are uh, doing your stand-in work. And then you go to the trailer and you get some dye put in and then you do uh, photo doubling. So that's two different vouchers. So those are in, in the world, those are good days financially. <laughs> so um, and what's the other one? And it says here that sometimes they can get you to do background work, but that I haven't seen yet, but it's not to say it hasn't happened. Again, too, on Fargo uh, season three, I remember one time they pulled, uh, they were doing a shot that they didn't think they were gonna have, so they pulled crew in to do a bunch of BG. And so they got double paid. So they got paid and then it was pretty good. Uh, payment errors uh, is, again, uh, something that you, you take a look at and then you, um, you just check in with uh, Donna here if you have a discrepancy. I, I just have another question. Double voucher thing mm -hmm. didn't happen to me, but somebody else. And what was said, I was standing there was, we don't do double voucher on this production. Sorry, it happened. Thank you for your work. Um, where would a person? Is that where we would get a hold of Actra? And Absolutely. Say, hey, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. I would need to do this, and now if you have an agent, say, look, they had yeah. me doing this. I, I was. This is what I was in for. This is what I came yeah, in and did. So talk to your agent and talk to Actra, because. Okay. That's that's taking advantage of you, um, which we don't want. Okay, who's who in the crew? Everyone sort of knows what's going on in the crew. I was gonna run through. So the director, we know the director gives direction, uh, is their vision. Uh, as a stand-in, you might talk to the director. Uh, some of them are, are fantastic, and a lot of them uh, to help get their vision after the actors have left. They might ask you to do uh, certain things, go to a certain things, just to see. So they're pretty cool. Sometimes they might not ever get your name or talk to you at all. So you don't know. Like it just depends their artistic vision. Um, and they're really busy. So I, I tend to not talk to them unless they talk to me, sort of. Stand-in to me is like uh, the kid at a Thanksgiving uh, dinner. Uh, you know, uh, back in the day where there's a small table and a big table where all the parents were having fun. <laughs> but they wanted you there and they wanted you ready if you had to do that little poem that you learned in school for everyone. <laughs> but then they wanted you to just be quiet because they're drinking baby duck and stuff. You know, that's standing. So you kind of come, you be quiet, you listen, you do your thing, and then you sit down and you're quiet and you listen. Uh, director of photographer, uh, that's pretty much the stand-in performer is hired to physically replace uh, another performer during a setup period. So you are working uh, primarily for the DP while working under the 80s management of the set. If there is any crew you belong to, it's the DP and camera with an incredibly clear, close ear on the gaffer, who is the head of lighting. He will use uh, you and need you uh, just as much as the DP. But always digress to the DOP. In the rare case, they both want something at once. Now, you're going to get a world of different DPs again, too, because people are so different. You're going to have DPs that are fantastic and treat you with unbelievable courtesy and respect and understand that you're doing a good service for them and you're going to get some that are really uh, angry and will <laughs> try to manhandle you a bit and boss you around. That sort of thing is getting sort of pushed away from the industry as the top rings are getting better so usually but I have been moved a bit which I don't mind it's when I'm just grabbed and moved around that I'm like hey <laughs> just let me know what you want. Uh, you're not there necessarily to act. You're there to uh, uh, do uh, 
the performance that, that or not performance, the movements, I'd say, that your actor went through. Um, so the cameraman might have you go at uh, one third speed because they're testing something. So you go slower. They might have you do it faster. Like there's different things that they'll ask you. So um, always ask them what they, they need of you. That could also be, I was on set once and one of the actors came in and had uh, no facial hair and I uh, was, had to ask the DCG, do you want me this gone? And he's like, yeah, yeah, that'd be good. So I went home and shaved. Uh, camera operator, uh, your other ear should be on the camera op. Uh, they'll sometimes place you and ask you to go through blocking. Uh, these guys, yeah, this is a good team. You have to be really work fluently with the camera department. Um, they are going to ask you to do a whole lot of different things so that you're focusing the camera. Uh, are you familiar with the cheats and stuff that they do in film? Yeah. It's crazy. You can watch blocking and then the camera sets up and then they'll move this piece of furniture over like that. But your original mark was here and now they want you over here. Go over here. Don't fight. Oh, the actor was right here. They'll, they'll work it out. That's why we're here. We're there for them. And it looks seamless when you go over here and you're on that mark and the camera moves in. And then the actor usually walks back on set and they're able to find it. On the occasions where the, the marker is moved so far away, that's pretty much the only time I'll come up to the actor and say, yeah, sorry, uh, they've moved your mark way over there. And uh, usually for the most part, the actor goes, thank you. <laughs> or they go, no, that's all right. Don't worry about it. I'll do this. And I'm like, well, but they're shooting from inside that car right now. And, that, uh, and they waste a shot, and then the director comes out and has to tell them, and then you see them sheepishly walk over to the... <laughs> <laughs> you can only... Uh, first assistant director. This, this guy was the revenant's first assistant director. This guy probably has no hair anymore. It was, <laughs> it was crazy. Uh, so they're directly responsible for the floor, the set, the safety, everything. Uh, and I know you, uh, from, from background world, you've seen the 80s, you've seen the, uh, the first AD ask of you certain things. Uh, it's the same as they're the ones that are calling for second team. So that's when first team leaves and they need second team to come on the floor, they will ask for second team. Uh, don't have them ask for second team twice. So. The guy that's sitting here reading the book. Oh, sorry. It's just uh, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do that. Exactly there. Okay. They don't want that. They want the person that's watching. Second team. Boom. I'm in. Or the person that's watching sees everything's done is walking in before they even meet. So it's about being set aware. Uh, these are just ripped from the net. I don't know who these humans are, but I figured they represented a second AD, a third AD, and a PA. <laughs> uh, second creates the call sheets and does all the production scheduling. Uh, the second serves as the backstage manager, liaising with actors and putting uh, through makeup and wardrobe. Uh, and uh, relieves the first when the first has to go off set. The third, is third assistant uh, director works on set with the first and may li uh, liaise with the second to move actors from base camp. Uh, the third is the person that you sign in with and sign out with. Um, a lot of times at the end of the day when you're leaving to sign out, they're not there because that's usually the same time that the talent <laughs> is down there. So sometimes you do wait for uh, them to come back from releasing talent. Um, some more crews, so we got you know some light the whole kind of boom guy, the sound cart. Uh, sometimes monitors, they don't have, there, there should be video village. Is everyone familiar with the term video village? That's where they've got monitors set up for you to watch what's going on. Uh, sometimes they don't, or sometimes they're just, uh, it's hard to get in and see. And sometimes they have, because uh, they'll usually have two sort of villages, one for producers, directors to kind of hone in on, and then they have another one that's usually for hair, makeup, wardrobe, stand-ins. Um, it's changing because uh, Tin Star, everyone had an app, so they all were on their, their, their personal devices, so they weren't setting up Video Village. So we, I would be like going to the sound cart and asking them, not just going over their shoulder, I'd be, hey, is it okay if I watch over? And they're like, yeah. And then you just watch the little monitors they have. So as tablets, I 
I assume as it's going to be kind of going that world, uh, be nice to the sound guys because they're still probably going to be <laughs> doing that. Uh, grips uh, have two main functions. The first is to work closely with the camera department to provide camera support, uh, and that's the dollies, that's the, the big cranes, uh, all that sort of stuff. They're moving around you. So sometimes you're <laughs> you've, you've done the blocking and you're there for the DP to get some lighting, but then they need stuff through. It's hard, right? Because you're always in the way. And it always seems like there's always scenes in doorways where they need you for their blocking and their direction, but they also need to get stuff through. So being aware and then kind of saying, do you need me here at this moment? And if the camera op is like, yes, the DP is like, yes, stay. If they're like, no, you're clear out, then clear out. Uh, we have uh, ward wardrobe, uh, makeup, and hair. Um, again, this is sort of typical of Video Village. They need to see their work. Um, so what happens a lot is, as a stand, and I'll try to stand, and I'm also tall, so you don't want to be in front. I'll stand back. I do need to see the monitor. Don't let anyone let you think that as a stand in you don't need to see the monitor. It's, that's our, it's our one of our only jobs is to make sure that they're still doing the things that were happening in rehearsal. Because if they change after their first take completely, we have to adapt so that they know what's going on for later on. And the script supervisor will watch us sometimes for continuity just to make sure that we're doing sort of the same things as well. Uh, so give them room. They need to see. They'll take photos. They'll come in. Don't get angry when someone comes in. Oftentimes they forget people are behind them and they'll block you. Just do that Curtis thing where you kind of sneak over like that <laughs> so that you can still see the monitor. Or go back and find our friend who no one's behind him and go, hey, is it all right if I peek over your shoulder? Yeah, yeah. And they might say no, and then that's also cool, right? We have to do our job. Uh, wardrobe. Uh, wardrobe's very important, and as you see when we develop going through our kit, uh, one of our main jobs is there because we're the same height, we're the same sort of build, uh, same sort of hairline, same sort of skin tone. Uh, they also need to see, some DPs want to see the exact sort of coloring as well. Some don't even care, but y you know, it's our job to care, so let's care as much as we can. So visiting the wardrobe truck and, and kind of asking what's going on tomorrow, what is our lead wearing? Oh, he's wearing a cowboy hat. Well, great, I got a cowboy hat. Uh, these were my colors for uh, Fargo, a couple of them, um, because standing in for uh, you in there, uh, I got a color palette from them at the beginning, and I just bought some things that kind of matched the color palette, so I could easily throw on you know, and then you have your black shirt, you have your gray shirt, stuff to cover on. I'd, I'd have uh, like a little jacket that was a different color that I could always have that's a gray one, and then I have a black one that I put on uh, because you want to kind of match. Um, women, uh, oftentimes I have seen have different hair wigs because lots of times you cover in, again, more than one person. Uh, costumers and wardrobe are awesome. Uh, so by introducing yourself to them at the beginning uh, and asking them what this character, uh, especially great when it's utility, because you don't know. I'm coming in and standing in for Don tomorrow. I go, oh, I'm in tomorrow for Don. What's, you know, what is he wearing? Oh, yeah, he's wearing beige. Okay, great. I'll wear beige. Uh, stunt coordinator and crafty. Uh, stunt coordinator uh, you'll see a lot of. And the reason I put them in there is because... Uh, Sometimes your, your safety <laughs> is paramount, so uh, making sure the stunt person also is looking after you as well is paramount. Craft services, uh, they're awesome. Um, always have your own bar with you, but usually you don't need it because craft services is set up. And as actor members, we're entitled to craft service uh, uh, regardless, which is good. So while your uh, non-actor members are eating that bowl of chips, you are uh, <laughs> eligible to walk in and just grab yourself a what to bring. OK, so bringing stuff. So uh, as many different color shirts as you can. So going through that, no logos, uh, no words. Uh, I bring a f flashlight. I, I keep two of these in my bags, the, the headlamps, um, just in case one of the batteries goes. 
Uh, books, puzzles, something quiet and unobtrusive. Some people are on their phones. Uh, I always recommend just shutting everything off on your phone that you can or not even bring it. But you know, it's the nature of people nowadays. Everyone still has them. Uh, books, again, and, and this is uh, from Chantal's list. I, the only person I've ever seen be able to actually read a book on set is Blair. Because his awareness of what's going on is su superhuman. Like He will hear the drop of hat and he's gone. Uh, and knows exactly what's going on. But most people, I think, get engaged with something and they miss out. Uh, camping chairs. I have two versions. I have this little guy, which is the one I tend to take most of the time because he's small, out of the way, and I can hide him easy. Uh, or this one, who's also small. Some people take these huge <laughs> monster chairs. <laughs> and not only is, are they hard to get into the, your, your, your vans, uh, they're just, you know, you get into a small set that's this size, and you got uh, grip equipment, and you got other things, and you have to find a spot for yourself too. And oh yeah, wait a second, I gotta get this out. Got my hammock. I like stories like that. <laughs> there is a camera op that does bring his hammock, which is kind of awesome. But uh, a pen. Pens are uh, so important to have. Um, I oftentimes will have two, and again, clip them shirt or pocket. There for any notes you need to take. Uh, clean indoor shoes, uh, always. Uh, this is Calgary, our weather is atrocious. And sometimes we're not sure where we're going. Uh, if your uh, call sheet shows that you're at some place downtown, put, make sure you have the clean shoes. Because if you're slogging through the mud, then you want to uh, whip on some nice clean shoes to go in. If you're at the film center and you park and you walk through mud and then you go into the film center, put on nice clean shoes, and uh, your feet will thank you. Layers, I often, everything's layered. A layer, uh, shirt here, uh, thermals, uh, easily foldable rain jacket, scarf, everything, and, and blacks, grays, that sort of thing. It gets really cold out there, and like Leo had his warming tent, like I had said, we don't. We have uh, these things, which I highly recommend. Uh, they do sometimes have them at Crafty, but don't expect Crafty to take care of you. Uh, these are foot ones. I never put them in my feet. They got stickers on them. So I'll stick them on my undershirt and on my back. And it keeps me nice and heated. And then I, or other people have those Melita heating jackets that you buy. They're like two or three hundred bucks. And you can charge them up and they keep heat for eight hours or something. Wow. Extra socks. It took me a year or two of standing to realize why uh, I was always, my feet were still cold. And then someone was like, dude, it's because you're wearing two socks. Boots still need to have air circulation. I don't know if you've done that, anyone done VG, and they're like, my feet are always cold. I'm wearing two socks, they should be one. Well, that's why. Your boots still need to have circulation. So bring extra socks and then change out of the socks when they're bad and put nice warm ones on and, and, and you're gonna appreciate that. Boots. Quick boots. Sham wow, I bring this just in case. You know, you don't know when you have to clean yourself up or your, your gear off or your boots or anything. And then the other thing is a, I keep a golf ball or a, a little rubber thing. Uh, these things, after standing all day, they're incredible. Just rub that on your foot, help your back out. It's hard work, this standing stuff. Even for the kids, young young folk. Um, any questions about what's spring? How are we doing for time? We're still moving along. Yeah, I've become like drunk uncle at a party when I'm talking. I just tangent it. <laughs> Going back to the <laughs> costume, do they sometimes define you as their costume? No. No. So no. For, for film, for film, yeah. I have, there was one time I asked if they had a spare hat and they obliged by giving me a, a hat, which they might do. Uh, and they don't need the same wardrobe? No, and you don't need the same oh, wardrobe. Okay. And you don't need to be crazy either. You know, like a couple, like that's three shirts and then my, my different shirts that I have, my gray one and my black one. It's sort of enough, because you know. So where do you, like, that's a lot of stuff. Where are you setting up? 
Okay, so that's a great <laughs> question. I have, these are my two stand-in bags. This is my winter one and my big change day ones. And then this is my normal one. So essentially, uh, and we'll, I might repeat this later on, when you, when you show up to set, uh, usually you have another stand-in with you and they might be there and then you converse and you try to find out wh what the best spot for you to set up the little stand-in village is <laughs> where you're gonna put up your chair and your, and your stuff. Um, Correct, yeah, yeah. I'm not a big fan of leaving anything outside <laughs> in the elements. Uh, you wouldn't leave it at circus. You'd always be on set because you always might need something. If all of a sudden the character changes and they're in a different color shirt, you want to be able to access your stuff. Um, that also reminds me of something else that I'll talk about in a sec. Does wardrobe never supply you with stuff? No. So you all, you're always responsible? We are responsible for ourselves. We, yeah, this is when this is the most adulting you'll ever do on set. <laughs> 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 but that also be true though. If you had more transportation, like say a tuxedo jacket. Oh, they don't need it. It's black. If they're wearing a tuxedo jacket, my black jacket is, is, is it's just a color. Well, I'm thinking of an example on, on Fargo, the wedding. Mm -hmm. The wedding anniversary. Sure. Three. Uh, the white. Yeah. Everybody in the gray room is wearing a big black tuxedo. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, that wasn't, that, okay, so that, that, wasn't that, that wasn't a stand-in. That wasn't a stand-in. What okay. you saw was his uh, uh, photo double, because uh, he was playing twins. So this character would play him when he was playing the other character. And then he had another guy that looked like his other character. Um, if you were photo doubling, you would be, you'd go through and they would equip you. They'd give you the haircut, they'd give you all that. But as a stand-in, just have a, that option. Like I would have had a white shirt. So if I was that, I would, Say, do you need white? I have my white T-shirt. Boom, you're you're covered. I do know that once during stand-in, I got told by not only my agent but the casting what I was to wear, mm -hmm. and I took that. But the colors were totally off, so they helped me out. Yeah, no, yeah. they're they're so awesome. They will, help us out. they will help you out, but don't. This is where it's like we still have to take that responsibility. Like to walk walk into the wardrobe and say, hey, do you? Uh, I meant to have this. You're, it's like, no, 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 no. They're, you're, you're the least of what they're worried about. But you, like you said, they sent you a palette. So you knew yeah, I'd asked it was your own stuff, yeah. but you knew in the land. Yes, I knew in the land where it lived. So, okay, so let's say your utility, and it's your first day on set, and you don't know. Uh, you could uh, take a look at the crew list that you get with the um, uh, your crew call. On the other side of this is a list of all your crews and your departments and then I would just phone production office and say hey can I speak to uh, Karen in Scotland wardrobe and they'll put you through and, you, and she'll say hello and you go I'm standing in I'm brought in for Lisa I'm just wondering what her col color palette is or what she she'll be wearing tomorrow at my call day and they'll go oh she's wearing this so uh, and if you're on set like what happens more than not is you're on set and the on set wardrobe, you'll just kind of ask, is, is Bobby, uh, is he gonna be wearing that gray suit all week? Or? No, no, he's got blue tomorrow. Okay, great. Oh, and a hat, okay, great. Questions, concerns? Uh, blocks and marking. Uh, okay, so marking, the they mark you down with so many different things, tape, these little sandbags, these little metal things, chalk, uh, rocks, uh, sticks, <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it, whatever sometimes what they can, can get you. So usually what happens is um, they'll have uh, the rehearsal for first scene uh, and it's a private blocking. So they'll call private blocking and they're off in a little room doing that. And it could be 10 minutes, it could be an hour. They call crew blocking. You show up with your sides and I do a pen. Some people just do it with their mind. Whatever you do, I, notes ne has never let me down, whereas my brain has. And uh, if you know the person you're following, let's say uh, Tommy is the actor I'm following, I watch what he's doing, but I'm also clued in on what the other person's doing. And then I'll, I'll go down between their sort of lines and just chalk where uh, they are during sort of their lines. And then I always draw myself a little map. Like, 
Uh, I'll do, okay, we'll remember where that was. And this is, you know, you know what's going to be funny? I'm going to close that because I was going to turn it around and the same thing would happen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so there's dialogue, dialogue, and then a chunk of, he, he walks through the door and throws his coffee down, dialogue, dialogue. I will uh, kind of go, okay, he's here and his arm's there, and then here, he's walking over here and he's looking this way now, his hands are in his pocket, and I'll be one, two, and then he's in the doorway staring at her, hands on his hips. And then I'll draw the doorway. And that's three. So I know. No, does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, other people just watch and they get it. And the thing is, you'll watch, <laughs> you'll watch uh, crew blocking and then they'll do another block and it's going to be completely different. And then you just go, okay, that's not what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll have that they'll do the setup and you do it that whole way and you've been diligent and you do everything that uh, they had done that first time. And then it comes time for them to shoot it. So you're at the monitors, you're at Video Village watching, and then the whole time they're like doing something different. What that means is the next time you go in, you do what they did because that's now what's on film. Colors. So basically, uh, every uh, actors they're they're numbered right on the on the call sheet. They're the the number in order of importance. You got th this one for example. It's got four, five, eight, thirteen, and then twenty two. Um, your number one would be your main actor. They also have colors usually for the run of the show. Uh, number one might just be this fluorescent. Number two might be this. Number three might be that. Uh, which also helps as they're laying down the color, then you know which color to follow when you're hitting the marks after uh, private blocking. Colors aren't on the call sheet, right? No, no, no. You have to just, this is where we have to adult, right? So you watch, or you can say to the camera assistant, and you say, uh, what color is you in? He, he's yellow. Yeah, he's yellow. Okay, great. Because there's a, okay, yeah, he's yellow. Or they might not have yellow that day, and then they're white. So you have to pay attention. Like this, stand-in is the easiest, hardest work there there is on set. You have to be quiet, you have to be attentive, and you have to have your ears kind of uh, all around and anticipating things. So everything that's like right and normal one day changes the next, but you have to adapt and do it with a smile. Um, how to watch the actors? We we kind of went over it. Uh, watch rehearsal very carefully, and don't be embarrassed to make yourself notes on your mini dailies. Uh, watch the actor's body during the rehearsal and make notes. Save watching their face and their act and talent for when she's actually doing the take, and you're at the monitor. Uh, you're the one who should be able to show the D DOP and the camera team exactly what the actress physically did and on what line that is your job. Understand? Uh, this is an important one, the eyeline one. Don't get caught in uh, the actor's eyeline. Even when we're, when they're, uh, well, even when, uh, always, when they're doing uh, crew blocking, I'll purposely kind of just do one of these things where I'm not looking at the face, I'm watching the body. And then you kind of go low when you move around. Crew blocking can be one of the most difficult things ever because we're all so polite because we're Canadian <laughs> and everybody wants to see. We have to be able to see. So if we have to go to uh, uh, a wardrobe person or a makeup person that's right there seeing and go, Gosh, I just need to sneak in. I just, this is when it's really important for me to see. Do that. Otherwise, you've just not seen anything and you're like, oh, all right. And then the, the setup and then you're told by all these people in an unhappy way that that's not what they did. That's not what they did. Uh, if the blocking is really intense and you've taken notes, but you're not sure if the actor took three steps this way, just ask the camera assist. Say, you know, I think did uh, did Billy take three steps that way and turn around, or four? And they will be like, I think it was four. And you go, thank you very much. And then you do four steps. Uh, 
This is the, yeah, during uh, uh, shot setup, be as quiet and as attentive as possible. There are so many people trying to do their jobs and you must always be eyes and ears and totally aware of what people need from you, <laughs> including the grip who just needs to be out of the way. Um, when walking away from the set with a thank you second team from first aid, you can choose to find your spot to watch. And okay, so we went over this. You can choose to, s to wa sit down uh, in your chair and be in your own little world, or you can engage with the monitors. Uh, I rarely sit down. Uh, some people do. Uh, that's why I have the golf ball, because I know my knees are going to be shot by the end of the day, so I need to make sure that they're, they're cozy. Um, the other thing is sometimes people, when they sit down and they're away from what's going on in the monitor, they chat, and they think no one can hear them. You know that, that whispering that every, everyone does that's really loud? Everyone still hears it? Yeah, it's one of those things. It's like, ooh, don't want to be them, and you don't. Uh, it's hard being a stand-in because it's you and maybe two or three or four other people and a crew that becomes family, but it takes a long time for that to, to develop. And they are their own thing. Grips are their grips. The camera are their camera. You're kind of like, again, that kid at the, the, the table that's sort of on their own outside of what's going on. So it's best to be polite, courteous, attentive, and always sort of um, treat everyone with uh, a lot of respect, uh, including yourself and the other folks. Uh, now, this is some stuff. The There's some new ratifications that are being done on the, uh, a, the agreements and that sort of thing. Um, it's, it's become a sort of a, sets can be difficult and there can be some uh, questions asked of us to do certain things. Uh, and we have to make sure that we're safe and we're being respected. Uh, so this is something that will, will be coming out uh, soon. Um, we've had instances on set where there was, we weren't asked to be nude, but you'd have to be in a bathing suit because the scene took place in a bathtub and they had to uh, still match everything. So. Um, the things that we looked out for ourselves on was that is that we had ropes, that we were there to take care of each other uh, and not kind of see stuff go on. Uh, there's times when the actors are engaged in hanky-panky and there is blocking that might have to have you be close to your other human. Uh, these are all things that we have to, the language is changing and we'll get those, that information to us in our agreement very soon. Uh, but that said, we also have to be very cautious to ourselves on how we engage with the people we're working with in a respectful manner and understanding what boundaries are. And it doesn't matter that the actor grabbed the butt. You don't. This is the, for blighting? Hey, that, that's it. And is that okay? No. Okay, is it okay if we just stand side by side? Yes, they're going to still get it. You know? And if you're uncomfortable, you don't have to do it. <laughs> You can ask the AD, look, I'm uncomfortable with this. No one told me about this. Is it all right if, yes, it's always all right. Uh, day in the life. So this is something you've, like, this is great because you've all been on set. So you all kind of know what's going on. Uh, let's assume you haven't been on set yet. The first night, you're going to get that call sheet emailed to you. Um, and it usually, if it's the first day of production, hey, you probably get it early and it's awesome. If it's mid-production, you're getting it at the wrap of uh, the shoot that day. So you might get it at 9 or 10 at night. But you've been waiting for it since 3 in the afternoon. So you've checked your emails a million times. Uh, and then you find out that it's out of town. <laughs> oh, God. So I have five hours of sleep and then, uh, then it takes me an hour uh, so you double check that your time is the same as the crew time, and we went over that. You uh, check the set location and calculate the time that will take you to arrive to circus. I do that. I'm, I'm an hour. I'm notorious. I'm an hour early. Uh, you, you Calgary traffic. There's never an excuse to be late in this city. Everyone comes in, oh, tra traffic is horrible. Construction. Yeah, it's Calgary. Construction's everywhere. <laughs> Bring a book. Be early. It's not... Same as auditions. Be early, for God's sakes. No one likes people rolling up right on time. Oh, it's time to go in. Oh. Uh, so at night, I'll pack my gear. I'll, I'll look at the call sheet. I'll read it, and I'll say, okay, so this is what's going on. These are the colors. I'm going to pack my boots because it's going to be outside for, oh, there's an exterior shot. Pack my boots, my hat, and then uh, get that ready by the door. Try to have a good night's sleep. 
It's hard. It's hard when the, sh the shift and, the, and everyone knows. Your you're one day, your nights, the next day, uh, two days later, your days. Um, we have to try to work on ourselves. And this is why it's a, hard, it's a hard gig to film in television, especially when you're on a, a, a show for like four months. Because um, you really only have your uh, Saturdays and Sundays. And they're usually sleep and food and, and laundry. Um, and, and begging forgiveness from your partners for uh, you being busy all the time. Uh, brush your teeth, comb your hair, shower up, uh, <laughs> be clean. Uh, you know? <laughs> You're in close proximity to a lot of people, so it's advantageous to uh, uh, follow hygiene. Uh, arrive to circus, hopefully at least 20 minutes early. Uh, again, I'm, like I say, an hour. I also like to have like uh, oatmeal. I like to get there and have a little thing of oatmeal and sit down and have a coffee and enjoy it. Go into the third AD and the AD trailer <laughs> and you uh, sign in with them. Uh, let them know you're there. Um, the communication with the ADs can't be uh, <coughs> something we downplay. Those are, the, I always let them know everything I'm doing. If I have to go to the bathroom, I'm clocking one of them and saying I'm 10-1, I'll be, so they know. Because if they call for second team, they can say, oh yeah, he's 10-1. He's I run to crafty, I'm running crafty really quickly, grab this, yeah, let them know. It's not as forgivable if you're needed and you're in crafty, but at least they know where you are so they're not running around trying to find you. Uh, I tend to ask for sides uh, in the trailer. Uh, oftentimes they don't have them because the ADs actually will have them on themselves. So uh, after checking with the third AD, I try to find uh, a PA and ask. Usually there is one that's always doing this, handing up the sides. And then I read them. Usually while I eat breakfast, so I kind of know what the day looks like for me. Uh, then I get myself to set. Uh, that could be walking. It could be jumping in a shuttle. Um, I guess those are the only two options, <laughs> walking in a shuttle. Uh, I like to locate the other stand-ins. Sometimes they're there uh, at the same time uh, in the uh, cater <coughs> catering area. Other times they are. Uh, already on set. And that's great because they've clocked it. And they, they're always, yeah, our gear's over here. Awesome. That's great. That's where we throw gear. Um, keep ears open uh, and wait for crew blocking. So typically, if you're down at set 10 minutes before the 7.30 call time, so you're there at 7.20, you know you've already uh, ascertained that the shot takes place in the barn. So you're close to the barn at that. So you wait five minutes, and then you see them mowing around. They know you're there. The first AD knows you're there. I like to even say, good morning. Good morning. How's it going? I'm, I'm here. Great. Usually they're busy doing other things, but they like to know where you are. Uh, keep your ears open for crew blocking. Go in. Uh, watch your actors. Take your notes. Uh, and then you're going to find the marks because the camera assistant uh, on uh, this, they usually do a couple crew blockings and the camera assist will drop the bean bags and then do the marks. And then you just find them, and uh, they will um, set the camera. They'll set if they have to set a dolly. You can step out, but they first they have to sometimes do. They'll come in with a finder, and they're finding what the shot's going to be. And then they're like, okay, so we need here. We're going to do here. We're going to rip the roof off. We're going to do this shot. That's sort of what happens right after the blocking of the scene. Um, so that's when we're attentive, and that's where we're doing pretty much what the camera ops asking us to do and what the DOP is asking us to do. And then once they figure that out, sometimes that's when we step out of the way of the grip so that they can set everything up, tear the roof off, and do all that sort of thing. Uh, once the camera is set up and the dolly track set up, you run through pretty much what's second team blocking. And they'll call it out, second team blocking, action, and then you do your stuff. They don't like acting, so don't go in there and emote what they were doing. You know, they just do the, do the blocking. Uh, unless they ask, hey, could you, I'm trying to sell a shot here. Could you act? And then you act. <laughs> it's like, sure. Um, some directors might want you to learn the lines. I know some stand-ins have had that request. On uh, Revenant, we had to for certain things, for pacing. Uh, but not all the time. Uh, the very beginning of that uh, show, they had us saying one, two, three because the script hadn't <laughs> really been finished. So we were going one, two, three, one, two, three. 
this funny stuff, the funny business that we do here. Uh, <laughs> uh, once the first team arrives, that's when you leave. That's where I go to Video Village, and you watch at least the first, uh, first team rehearsal and shot. I like to watch all of them. I just think it's fun. Uh, keep ears open for uh, when you're out at Video Village or reading your book. Keep your ears open for them calling second team again, for them saying flipping the lens, for them saying uh, moving on, checking the gate. All these sorts of things are the key words to know that you're needed. Uh, that as well as if you're at the monitor visually, you can see them leave. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, well, there's you. Oh, okay, I got to get in there. And sometimes they don't want you in there, but if, as long as you're there and you can eye on and say, did you need me now? And they'll go, yeah, actually, yeah, here's a mark. Or sometimes you'll be in the other room and all of a sudden you, <laughs> you see the sound guy walk up and they're like, because we weren't there and they needed to flip the lens and go in. And then you go, ah. Uh, there's two or three of you uh, in a scene blocking, but there is five actors. Ask the DP, which actor do you want me to stand in for at the moment? Uh, don't get precious about who you're standing in for. Uh, <laughs> if there's three of you and there's five different actors, oh no, I always stand in for you. And well, you know, well, right now the two other guys are taller. So it doesn't matter, you're not losing your job if you, for this particular setup, you, you say, uh, you clock, clock you and I'll clock tall dude and that other guy. It just makes it easier for the DP. You know, does that make sense? Some people, oh, well, I can't, I can't, oh, I, I'd never, I can't do that. I'm here. It's like, uh, we're here for the DOP <coughs> and the camera ops. So do, do that. Uh, and rinse and repeat. <laughs> right? On time, on budget. Perfect. Uh, rinse and repeat. So that's your day, basically, going through that. Um, once you're wrapped, you gather your gear, you go to the AD trailer and you sign out, making sure that you've sort of, uh, everything you've jotted down matches what they sign out. Uh, and then you ask for, if you know you're back tomorrow, or even if you don't, you say, hey, is there, am I in tomorrow? Is there a call sheet? And they usually have a new, fresh call sheet that they'll give you. Which is, you know, again, you're gonna have to recycle it because what ends up happening is you get it emailed to you anyway. But I just, from my peace of mind, I like knowing that I have it. Uh, that's also a time when you can pop into wardrobe and inquire about the colors that they might wear that next day. Uh, I sometimes do it in the day uh, as they're closer to the end of night. I'll ask the on-set wardrobe, hey, what are they wearing tomorrow? And I'll let you know. Um, get the shuttle back to your car and then drive safely home. Uh, it's funny that I put that, but it's, it's uh, driving safely home after 16 hours is probably the most important thing for you to do. Um, if you're too tired, like do something to wake yourself up before you, you head into the car. Um, there are set accidents constantly until the hours of work <laughs> changes. Well, we have to just be very uh, cautious, especially if you're out of town. If you're on this icy, windy roads and you're tired. Uh, and a moose, yeah, I actually, uh, yeah, Fargo, there was a moose <laughs> I saw walk out. You gotta, you know, uh, brush those pearlies and get some sleep. Um, any questions? So when you come back to set, they're all, you don't necessarily get on a mark, but they're telling you when they need you in, like, when they, like Yeah, so you're talking after lunch, or you're talking no, after? When, like, you, you're being called back, to, like, you see that they're moving on. They're moving on, okay, so let's say they're, they're, they're flipping the lens. I will walk in, and I'll say uh, to our camera, Daryl, do you need me on the mark? Chances are yes, okay, great. Don't wait to be asked. Yeah. Okay. So it's our job to just anticipate. So I will always be, um, Daryl, I'm on the mark. Would you like me on the mark? Uh, no, that's good. Stand down. Okay, great, man. Then you stand down. And then all of a sudden someone's like, where's second team? And then you're right close by and then you get back on. And give yourself instant forgiveness. Yeah. Like their tempers on set go up and down and are sort of different. Don't let that, don't carry that. Because they forgot about it by the next setup, and yeah, then you're, you're like, you're always there and like getting yourself on mark, and then like I didn't ask you to stand there, like I just didn't know you. Were we'll happen. Yeah. yeah. It's better that you're there and you're like, and you're 
it will happen a lot. Like it's, it's, it's a fascinating thing. You have to really pay attention to what's going on. And once you get into sync with what you know, and the thing is one uh, person might not want you on set, but the DP does. Yeah, I've been told by the AD, we don't need you, are good. And the DP is like, no, 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 no. And they're right in there with like, and I go, okay, well, you know, Craig needed me, so that's why I'm here. And then they're like, okay. So for hats, they're, okay, so ha hats essentially, it's, it's a lighting thing, right? Uh, cowboy hat is gonna be, uh, they're gonna, gonna light you different. Um, they weren't fussed if the guy was wearing a, a, a brown hat and I had this, that didn't fuss them as much, but some DP it might. Like one DP is like, I don't even care what color you're wearing, I don't, it's skin tone that I care about. It's height that I care about. Others really want it to be the same. Uh, don't go out and buy, if it's one shot, don't just say, hey, I have this. And if you don't have one, and, and that's when you can go to a wardrobe and say, do you by chance have an extra hat that I could wear? And they may say yes or no. I know, on, I think Helen Wheels had hats in the stand and would always just borrow the same hats. Um, uh, baseball caps, just try to have, uh, you know, a generic, no logo hat. Um, most times they don't, you don't see it a lot because it doesn't. They don't never really look great on film, so you don't see it a lot. Uh, do's and don'ts: advice from Calgary's elite second teamer. So I said to uh, sort of uh, request that to some of the second teamers that are out there and ask them some of their advice as far as what they say is do's and don'ts. Uh, this is a McConaughey. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew McConaughey. It's, uh, He's probably not doing a lot of stuff. No, no, I just, I love him because uh, he's a funny guy. Uh, so do, always pay attention to your character, characters. Uh, know when you'll be needed so crafty washroom breaks are appropriate. Um, when in doubt, it always happens that uh, blocking is finished and you're there and then you're like, I gotta pee, great. And then they, uh, uh, first team goes in and you're like, okay, great, I can pee and they're like, First team's done like that, and then they're flipping the lens, and then, so uh, <laughs> you're always gonna have to pee when uh, you're on the mark, it's just a rule. Uh, <laughs> and always when the <laughs> substantials come in, <laughs> the hot food after a long day, the, you know, the late time, that's when they're using you here. So you're there, they're blocking, and then everyone's over there getting chili and getting stuff, and you're just there going, yeah, I hope there's some left, I'm so hungry. It'll happen. So that's when, you, if you're teamed up and your 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 fellow stand-ins work, look out for each other. So if there's two of you working and the other's not, look out for that person because you want to make sure that they get the food, they get the stuff that they need, they get the information. Share information. Be awesome for each other. Because um, that's the best way. <laughs> it's like that's our that's our little family there. Be punctual, professional. Always uh, bring appropriate clothing uh, for weather. Uh, also, uh, shoes, uh, no open-toed shoes, no flip-flops, you know. Maybe if your character's wearing flip-flops, you'd bring them in, but just don't, you know, hazard to always have covered shoes. Uh, watch one rehearsal after first team steps back in case there are changes. And again, I, uh, I watch all of them. Uh, wardrobe check at the end of the day, uh, we'll lend to the DOP, and we've covered that. Uh, keep an ear open after second team is called in. Uh, we've covered that. Be aware of your surroundings. Lots of flags and equipment are being put up or and moved around you. Yeah, it's crazy. It is, uh, there's so much stuff. And on, uh, in the, the film center, has anyone wor work in, worked there yet? Uh, when the lights are down, it's dark and you're walking around and you can walk into a C stand. You can walk like it's, it's uh, so be aware of your, your surroundings at all times so that you're, you're appropriately safe. Uh, make sure you get your call sheet. Again, we went over that. Uh, always tell your AD, uh, it's usually the TAD, um, where you're going at all times. We've covered that. As well as always kind of let your other fellow standings know where you're going. Because it, it's, it's uh, still nice if they're called in and you go to your mark and you're like, uh, uh, Tannis just went uh, a 110. She'll be back in a second. You know, covers her and yourself. They kind of tend to, and this is general, but uh, 
we're looked at, stand-ins are all looked in as stand-in. It's kind of like how background is all background. Like it doesn't matter that, you know, 98% uh, of people are doing an awesome job all the time. <laughs> the two that don't, everyone gets muddled into that. Does anyone, oh, you know how this works? It's the same as stand-in. So do awesome all the time and everyone will be lumped into awesome. Uh, don't show up late. Don't sit in cast chairs or chairs in video village. Uh, don't sit on, sit on set pieces or equipment or carts. Yeah, never sit on carts. Never sit on the apple boxes. The apple boxes are great. So you can, uh, let's say I'm uh, standing, I'm 6'1", and let's say the guy I'm covering is 6'8". They're going to get me to do it rather than the guy that's 5'9". Uh, five, five, uh, but I'll need an apple box to get that high. They're there for us to use. But what we don't do is we don't just grab one. So we ask the grip. We say, is it all right if I get a full apple? And they'll say, yeah. So you take that. Now that's your responsibility. You use it to do the shot. And then you make sure you get that, return that back if you're not using it. Don't just leave it. Oh, it's the grip. It's equipment. They'll do it. No, no, no. That Now you've loaned it out. It's a library book. You make sure that gets back to them. I panicked one day because I forgot one on, I forgot to return one on set. So I had to text one of the lighting guys that I knew and made sure, hey, man, uh, I put the box up there. Is there uh, Okay, if you put it back, and he's like, "Yeah, it's already been taken care of." Okay, good. But you should have that kind of panic about stuff like that too. Think about kneeling pads. I've been doing a lot of kneeling, so if I get a pad, should I take that out or leave it to the actor when he comes in to have the kneeling pad as a courtesy? Uh, like cameras giving you a pad because sometimes they will. Yeah, well, camera or or the set, um, the guy who's doing the set. Yeah. And the, the, the director will say, "Do you need a kneeling pad?" And I go, "Yeah, I'd like one." Yeah. So I just leave it there because I'm thinking the actor's going to need one. It's going to be much more comfortable than kneeling on the hardwood floor. Yeah, sure. I'd say that that's always, like asking questions is never a bad thing. Okay. So I always just kind of say to uh, to the camera off, is, is should I leave this for, wh yeah. who are you standing it for? Uh, this week, Brandon Oakley. Brandon. So do you think I should leave this uh, pad for Brandon? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Then, um, <laughs> uh, then ask the AD, the first AD who runs the set. Is it, should I leave this yeah. in for Brandon? And they'll probably say yeah, because actor's comfort is, is paramount. Yeah. Uh, don't overdo your welcome at Crafty. Again, yeah, Crafty is not a place to just hang out and <laughs> talk about a gossip girl from the night before. Greg is there to grab some quick food and water. Uh, water's important, stay hydrated. Like, uh, especially this summer, it was crazy with the smoke and with the heat. Uh, oftentimes you forget about drinking. Uh, so uh, always uh, have water. That's on do. <laughs> uh, don't ask when you can go home. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's we laugh, but people do that. People people do that even when it's long. Uh, they've been there all day, and it's getting to be the end of the day, and they're like, "Yeah, can I cut out early?" It's like, no, uh, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't believe you can. Um, uh, don't lose focus. Um, so focus, again, is th that's the important thing. That's the kid, Thanksgiving table. Your, your, your ear is on what's going on. Uh, and it can be fun, right? The set can be so much fun because the grips are laughing and, and the art department, they're having a good time and you're, you're kind of around and you're always be listening to what's going on. You don't want to be caught into that. They, they know their job. They're listening to their stuff. They're on the radio. We don't, for the most part, don't get radios. Sometimes stand-ins get radios. I've never had one. So when you don't have a, a radio, you uh, have to really rely on everyone else. So uh, locations, having a radio, being around locations, especially if Crafty's far away and there's a locations person there, and you hear it go, J -j 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 -j, just ask, what's going on? And they'll let you know. Oh, they're still setting up your deal. Okay, great. Uh, don't wear too much makeup or kind of hairstyle that doesn't match your actors. Uh, yeah, go uh, sort of as neutral as you can for hair and makeup. Uh, men, if you have long hair, women, if you have long hair, bring a hairband, because uh, you never know if you need. And th then again, you also might be standing in for someone else, so you want to uh, do that. Uh, women oftentimes get uh, looped in this, and I think generally because of size, uh, standing in for kids. Like, um, yeah, uh, and sometimes that is also like, on the, uh, now I'm on knees. But you have long hair and it's a boy, so you know being able to tie your hair back is, is good. Uh, don't forget to manage yourself 
uh, like a small business, you are. Handle your paperwork, ensure you have the materials you need for the job, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, know, as an actor, knowing your, the AIP agreement, that's your responsibility. Read it, get comfortable with it. Uh, call sheets, learn how to read them, get comfortable with them. Uh, it's funny, actors that don't want to uh, do a, a little bit of background, don't want to do a little bit of stand-in, they're missing out on a lot of this education that happens on set, as far as comfort, seeing how sets are um, handled and how they work. And that's one of the best things about this stand-in job, is we are, we're privy to that, and you're right in there. You're watching uh, movie stars and Oscar winners doing their work right in front of you. And then you also realize that, that that dude's no different than us at all. They've maybe trained a little more some other places. They've had uh, more opportunities. Uh, but they're no different than us. We are all the same. We are all one gig away, right? So um, that education is, is, is awesome. Uh, last but not least, and this uh, comes from uh, Chantel, uh, try to have a thick skin and a quick joke. Film crews are made up of the most dynamic but tough people around. You must gain their respect before they treat you like family. But they will when they become the integral and efficient part of the team. You must be able to shake off a sharp word and walk away with a lesson instead of hurt feelings. You must save your exhaustion and need to cry for when you get home. And to save your sanity, you have a laugh and attempt to embrace the incredibly diverse people that make the organized chaos of a set work. Figure out what they do, learn from all of them, and in doing so, you'll become a better stand-in with a healthier respect of those around you and how the whole process works. Hugely important because it's like that. It's like first day of school sometimes, and you, you chart the kids where they are, and it does take a while to get known by them. But that does not, it's not a value marker on who you are, right? N know that. Know why you're there. You're there to do your job. You're there to make, uh, to add stuff to your toolkit, and you're there. Uh, huge thanks, uh, Marty, Aaron, Shelley, Donna, Tina, Akiko, Blair, and Chantel to help me out. And always just be excellent to each other. You know, like at the end of the day, that's it's really all we have on sets. Uh, frustrations happen on the daily. Uh, things happen that you see that are horrible. Be, uh, be decent to background because you were there. You know what it's like when you walk on a set and people treat you bad? Not that it happens a lot, but it's, it's happened, I've seen it. But I've also remember when Garrick uh, on Hell on Wheels, and Garrick, the first time I met that guy, he was a dancer. I see Garrick as a dancer, hey. He walks over and he shakes everyone's hand. He's like, good to meet you, right? It kind of, we are all sort of the same. We all come from the same area. So just be awesome with each other. That said as well, you're doing a job. <laughs> so it's hard sometimes to be super friendly when you're blocking and someone wants to, hey, that they don't know that you're like, oh yeah, this is great, Tom, but right now they're, they're setting the camera up in front of me. So, hey, I'll chat with you in a bit. Know that I'm doing this, you know, understand that all these people circling me right now, that's for this. You know? <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> um, <laughs> any questions? No. no, I would just go with like yeah. neutral, you know. Um, it, everything's about skin tone. So if you if you've been hired because your skin tone, and then you come in and you've put uh, all this <laughs> paint on, <laughs> it's, yeah, they're gonna go. What? Like sometimes guys will be asked to shave. Sometimes they'll be asked to keep a beard. Sometimes they'll be asked to uh, color their hair. Uh, sometimes uh, you'll be asked to throw a wig on. Uh, all those sort of things. And then other times they're like, don't care. What? Yeah, you're the height. <laughs> okay, great. Oh, and you, so you came to set, and he had a big beard, and you had had a big beard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the miscommunication. <laughs> but now you get the glory of growing a beard back again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So one of the coolest things right now that's happening in Calgary is because of the film studio and uh, because the production's coming in, there's more. Uh, there's l not less, but there's more contemporary things, I guess, that we're shooting. So the, the days of us guys having to have the big, huge beards and the hair uh, is less, and the, and the days of, of uh, 
the women just happening to be uh, marginalized uh, saloon workers uh, is hopefully leaving so that there becomes better uh, opportunities um, for people of many different looks and many different backgrounds to actually be able to step in and be a standard, which is great. So I just wanted to be clear because I'm not clear about this. Sure. So you watch, let's say you watch the first season of Sailor Blood and whatnot, and then you write down your notes as a black queen for Sailor Moon, mm -hmm. and then you do that exactly what you think all of it doesn't match with the schema. So then whatever uh, creates a DOP, it has to be seen, it has to go there, mm -hmm. and then there's no Okay, so that's sort of two questions. Okay. No, no, no worries, this is, is important. So you've watched first team blocking, and first team blocking is they come here and they step up this side of the table, okay? And then the we come in. This is our first mark, and this is our second mark, right? So there'll be two marks there on the floor. We'll probably start at one spot while they're lighting, and they might say hit second mark, and then you go to second mark and then they're doing some more stuff. They're trying to figure out the shot. And then you'll go over here and then they'll say, okay, uh, do it at three quarters speed. They'll find it, say out, and then you do your mark. First team will come in and they oftentimes will, they'll shoot it, they'll do their thing. They go here, right? So the next time I come in, they've changed, they're changing uh, angles. You'll come in, you hit the marks the same way, but now you're, you're gonna do it the way you saw on the monitor. Right. Um, if they come in and it's normal, they don't change it. They're they're a pro and they do everything exactly the same way. But the camera is going to be shut up here, and then they decide to move the mark over here for us. You do that, and then the camera assist usually moves the mark. And if they don't, you say, "Would do you need the mark moved?" And they'll go, "Oh yes." Understand? You never. I never move. I never touch the mark. Like we want to, we want to think we're being helpful. <laughs> oh, well, I'll move the mark. No. But uh, yeah, the camera assistant, and they need to clock where it is. So if it hasn't been moved, I usually just go uh, to the camera op or to the flag exam down and say, "Does the mark need to be moved?" They've moved me here, and then yeah, yeah never not ask. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you're unsure, ask. Well, they'll, they'll, they'll see it. The mark is now this way. The marks are, uh, like I say, they're the, the T's, right? So that typically is your foot's going to be all the way to the line, right? Um, sometimes there's like a rough blocking where they, they can't go out of this, so they'll tape up a foot like that. And then the actor knows that they're, they can't, that this is exi the parameter that they have to be in, you know? Usually actors are kind of funny because some are going to be really uh, engaging and friendly. Others are going to be aloof because they're in process and you might just get a thanks, yeah, which is fine. It doesn't mean that. No, no, they'll find it. I only, the only times I will uh, yeah. do anything is if it's so drastic from what they knew that they don't know that it's far away. Uh, the particular one I was talking about is Tin Star. They had moved the gentleman's mark from the door because the shot they wanted, their shot that they wanted, their money shot, was from a car. And they needed him over there. And it didn't work from where he was. Uh, so that's when I would go, hey, uh, just to let you know, they've moved you over here. Or one time on Fargo, they moved his mark so far back that I was like, yeah, just to let you know, they've moved your mark really far back. Yeah. But sometimes they don't want to hear that. There's other actors that are like, I don't. And they'll be cursed and they'll say, I don't care. And then you just go, OK, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kid at Thanksgiving ta table. Uh, acting can be so difficult because they're in their process. They're finding themselves. So again, we don't judge them either. They're, it's, they're, there's so much writing on them. You can't. You, it's, it's, they're so overwhelmed. The last thing they need is an uh, overzealous stand-in telling them, hey, last time you did this. It's like. <laughs> That's, that's for the director and that's for the DP to, to tell them. Our job is for the DP to be able to light the scene, the camera to be able to uh, set up and get the shot. So it's the easiest, hardest job there is. Uh, what will happen though is uh, you'll be on set and they're doing the stuff and uh, you're trying to be all quiet and you might hear your stomach go, 
or you might start to get really thirsty, or you might start to feel like you need to, you know. So there is, <laughs> yeah, there's the, the normal human nerves that happen. Uh, but it's about being comfortable. It's like every first day is, is amazingly uh, nerve-wracking. You don't know what's going to happen. And you don't. Every day on set is completely different, yet so much the same. So that's why professionalism is always going to get you ahead. Uh, talking to everyone is always going to get you ahead. Uh, when in doubt, always ask a question. The m key people you're going to talk to again are your, your PAs, your ADs, your, uh, the director of photography, and the cameraman, and the camera assist. These are people around there. that they w Their job is to make sure that you can do your job, and your job is to make sure they can do their job. So whenever you are in doubt, ask. Uh, if you feel in your heart that you're asking way too much, hopefully you're with another stand-in and you just go, hey, Lonnie, um, what do I do? And then I'll go, hey, you're fine. Just breathe. That's all you need to do right now. Breathe and hit your mark. They'll figure it out. Um, and it is, it's weird. When they cheat stuff, it's weird. Because <laughs> you, you want to think. Uh, uh, keep your eyes open. I've spotted continuity things. And if I see them and no one's clocked them, I'll sometimes grab the, or let the AD know. Um, is that uh, uh, Apple Box meant to be underneath that lamp right now? And they'll go, oh, no, thank you. Yeah, they do. Water bottles, uh, keep your water bottle. If you're going to have it on set, I recommend don't. Uh, but know where you place it. <laughs> They're, you, you see them all over the place. You see different things. Don't leave your stuff on set ever. Oh, like the coffee cup, like what? Yeah. I, I mean, that stuff happens, but don't. Like it's washable. Yeah. Yeah, like it happens. These things happen. So be res be respectful. Be uh, professional. It's that's why it's hard. It's like until you're there on the set, you don't know. Fortunately, everyone here has been on set, so you understand. Uh, what's to be asked of you. Um, it's all about professionalism. <laughs> it's all about not talking too much. It's all about understanding when the uh, ADs are on their, to not talk to them, because you know that they're, they're listening to other things. Um, don't grab props that are there, unless it's a specific shot that needs you to hold the rifle up. But then what you do in that circumstance is you say to the AD, would you like, do you want me to touch this rifle? And then you talk to the armorer and props. They want me to hold this. Is that all right? And they'll say yes or no. But just because the actor picks this up in the thing, don't, don't do it. Uh, uh, newspapers and stuff as well, I won't, I won't pick up because I don't know how many they have. And the last thing they need is me ripping it. So that's why sides are always great to have because sides, um, they become, they become a newspaper. They become uh, you know, a phone. Your phone, if you have it, becomes the phone that's actor. I'd rather have my face on my phone than have the actor have my greasy face on their <laughs> phone. Do you know? Like, leave their props unless specifically requested by the DP and uh, the ADs. And then again, always ask prop. Even if they say, hey, grab that, just say to prop. Is it all right? Because uh, they might only have one, and you break it, oh, keep breaking, you buy it. <laughs> yeah. Um, questions, concerns. Is everyone feeling comfortable? I would get, I would get you. Part of me was thinking, hey, do I get you up and actually get you to block it out? But it's arbitrary. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't work because there's there's something about being on set with all that stuff happening that you kind of have to uh, baptism by fire to figure it out, right? It's crazy. So yeah, it is. It's stuff is happening. And, and yeah, the other thing that happens is you might have uh, on Tin Star. There was one actor that I stood in for uh, John, who was a phenomenally gracious, amazing actor and human. But he, uh, he didn't like watching the actors do any of his stuff. So if he was on the phone like this, he couldn't see it because it threw off his process. So we had to just walk in for the blocking. Respect that, if that is the case for them. Not how would you know that? Oh, you know. Uh, you, you'll know. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, 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 I found out. I don't have that experience. I for sure. Know, so I 
that? Yeah, no, you find out, uh, usually you're told by, uh, I was told by the script supervisor, uh, don't do that, it throws him off. Um, this, is, this is where I say, you know, don't fight, well, no, that, he was doing that, I gotta do, it's like, yeah, it throws him off, that's okay. And then you tell, you repeat that information to your camera op and the DP. I'm told that John doesn't like it when you go through his motions. Is it okay if I just walk like this? And then they'll understand that that's how John processes and go, yeah, that is fine. Right? You know, there's, there's no reason for us to fight about anything on set. You just, we just have to go with the flow. Um, Do you have a delegation system? Like your kid when it comes to any system? And you just do yes, you're a kid at a Thanksgiving table. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so, so if your DP tells you to just like. You, your DP is your main person. So always, always go to what they tell you. Always go to what they tell you. Um, and, the, and the camera off. It's okay. Also, I know I'll be told, and somebody else will tell me. I said, "No, DP told me to be right here and stay here." So I'll be like, "Okay." Yeah, I always go. I've been asked uh, by Craig that uh, to stay on the mark for the lighting. Yeah. And if that's changed, I'm I'm happy to step out. Okay. And then they'll go, "Oh," and they'll ask Craig and Craig, "Oh, I forgot about that." No, no, he's good. And then you step out. Yeah. And then what, if that person's mad, you let it. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's done. The next setup, it won't it won't happen. So, yeah. 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 Um, I'm going to caveat that asking questions just a little bit. Um, sometimes asking too many questions are because we personally are, are really nervous and unsure. Ask your stand-in buddy with you when you're there, when that is w w where, why you have to ask a lot of questions. If you're asking the te technical questions that need to be asked that aren't nerve-related, or uh, sort of confused first day related, uh, then go to your DP. Does that make sense? Yeah, your teammate, your second teamer there should be, like we are fortunate in this city to have some great talent in the stand-in world and people that are open to mentorship. So um, ask them, let them know at the beginning, hey, this is my first time uh, doing stand-in, is there any tips? Is it all right if you just you know shadow me and let me go through this? And they should be like, yeah, absolutely. So that's why it's hard to arbitrarily kind of uh, uh, set it up here because uh, we'll, we'd probably all pass with 100% doing it in this setting. But the minute you have, you know, different stimuli happening and you need to feel that and then figure out how to adapt with it. Yeah. All right, any more questions or are we, how are we for time? Right on? We still have 20 minutes, awesome. You guys want to watch a movie? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any outtakes? Outtakes, yeah. Uh, which is funny. There was outtakes. Uh, it's a damnation. One of the <laughs> one of the stand-ins, a handsome young kid, is doing this shot. He's <laughs> his hair was like blowing, and then the the who was it? I said the D, somebody in the department put like a '70s or '80s sort of uh, music to it, and then kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as he's there. And that came a little meme, a little in-house little oh. meme, which is funny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, no, he's just like out like in the cold and his, his hair is blowing <laughs> in the wind. And he's, I don't know if he knew he was looking handsome and standing there, but they, they clocked it. Um, uh, don't take, uh, again, too, uh, uh, it's the same as BG. Uh, it might be cool to take selfies of yourself on there. <laughs> Just don't. I don't have, uh, the only photo I had was me as a photo double in the trailer so that I could send a picture to my girlfriend of what I was dressed as. Th I've never social media that. I've never, I, that's just, that's not our job. I know people want to. It, it doesn't add value to us, I don't think, to let everyone know, hey, this is what we did. Like, so don't do it. Uh, there's NDAs that you, you sign. Don't go talking about the show when you're filming it. Don't, yeah, I say caution. You know, uh, don't bug the actors for photos. Uh, some people do, but that's at the end of a, uh, a, a end of a run when they have a relationship. Uh, I've never never done it. I've also never thought that why should I? Like to me, they're peers. So. Uh, any question? Oh yeah. Uh, 
good call. Uh, people are going to be uh, run the sets completely different. So on TV, basically, you, you're going to have uh, different directors come in, and they're all going to have a different style. You're going to have different ADs, um, and they're going to have completely different styles. So it's kind of like first day of school, every block, <laughs> and how these uh, ADs are going to manage the set. Some of them are really gruff. Some of them are really uh, sharp-tongued. Uh, and we have to like kind of let that roll off our backs and just kind of do our job. Um, yeah, I keep on repeating the same things. And th there's a reason. <laughs> there is a reason. <laughs> I have a whiteboard and a marker. I could burn 20 minutes. No, th the reason it's 20 minutes is because everyone's filled out paperwork. That is, that is 10 minutes in my gig. <laughs> You guys know what's going on. I practice that. It's, it's half an hour of me drawing that so that I could go over it. And you're all, yeah, I filled that out. I know what's going on. Okay, so is this is this for stand-in work? Just for background. Okay. Good, good question. So basically, what's going to happen is uh, just right down here, where uh, this line that's background performers and stand-ins. So they'll say stand-ins are, are at the top, so it'll tell the stand-ins when they're coming. And BG usually it says BG, and it will also say w the call time there. You don't necessarily your agent doesn't necessarily send you the call sheet they just tell you when to show up right usually you're there earlier because you have to get uh, yeah, wardrobe and all that sort of stuff oh yours wasn't the same it said B, it said BG <laughs> say six o'clock well, yeah actually in my example it didn't actually even say BG so that's the way I think it got confusing right I think they only did refer to standards right or, or lumped it, it together it, so maybe it, that's what it was yeah no they never lump you together because we're a different we're a different uh, we're a different category in the same department. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you d that's that's one of those things where, uh, as a stand-in, you'll always have uh, your call time uh, on the sheet. Uh, the person that's in first is usually on the first line. If you're in another time, you're going to be on another line, and it might say 1300. Everything's military hours. Uh, and in that case, uh, still always be half hour, 20 minutes, 40 minutes uh, early. Um, yeah, yeah, and it doesn't, if you're early, just, you know, uh, chill out. Don't go bugging crew that's doing that. Crew call is 7.30, but most of them are there actually on their, their other crew stuff, getting stuff ready earlier than that. Yeah, always be prepared. Again, it's uh, professionalism, uh, keeping your ears open, being prepared. Um, when in doubt, ask in the questions. Um, not fighting. <laughs> uh, being aware if there's something that you see uh, in a shot that wasn't there before to clock it and let your, your AD know. Uh, and then don't spend the next hour being uh, proud of yourself for uh, <laughs> saving the show. Uh, it's a thing, we're a team. This movie, right? It's called. It's called uh, Second Team, right. season two. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, this episode is directed by Lance McCool, so that's a good one. <laughs> Produced by Bob Fancy Pants and Tracy, Tracy Big, so you know, yeah, it's coming out. You're online to produce. All right, well, if there's any, uh, no further questions, uh, I think we could probably wrap up um, uh, today's uh, session. Uh, I will be hanging back for a little bit if you do have like little questions you didn't want to uh, answer. And uh, again, thank you, everyone. It's probably clocked out, but <laughs> it's, good. it's good that you're there and having coffee. Uh, but thank you very much for showing up. And, uh, thank you. Thank you.